This is The Wheel Weaves, a Wheel of Time podcast with no spoilers. Hey everyone, I'm your host Danny, and I'm the first time reader going through this series chapter by chapter. As always, there's no spoilers past the chapter we're covering, and that means it's totally safe for first time readers. I'm joined by my co-host Brett, who's a longtime fan, and he's guiding me on this journey. We'd like to thank and acknowledge our executive producers, Brandy Aaron Kirkwood, Sean McGuire, Yanis, Albert Lorenzo, Light Blinded Fool, Davis Ferreira, and Kristen Gilreath. And before we get into things today, we just want to thank and welcome a genius and oddball to the Wheel Weaves Patreon team. Thank you so much for your generosity and your support. We really, truly appreciate it. In this episode, we're talking about chapters 15 and 16 of Winter's Heart. Yeah, so chapter 15 is In Need of a Bell Founder, and chapter 16 is An Unexpected Encounter. Yeah, okay. We got the return of the boy. We did. He's back. I predicted it. Officially. I said he'd be back this book. Yep. Here we are. He's back. And the fact that he's back is more exciting than the majority of these chapters. Which is fair. Okay. Yeah. Lots of kind of recap. Lots of setup. Where are we now? What's going on? Well, and tie that into the last chapter that we just read with the arrival of Tuon. Mm -hmm. And leading into this, we got stuff to talk about. But we're also at the official halfway point in Winter's Heart. Oh, wow. We crossed over that mark in this. So officially, we spent a book and a half without Matt. Whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. Never again, right? I hope so. Hopefully not. Hopefully. We don't have enough time to miss him for another book and a half. Oh my gosh, no. Oh man. And then we have to do all this setup when we miss somebody for this long. We do. And it's kind of boring. I am going to make it <laughs> exciting. Nope. Maybe. I doubt it. I'm going to make it complicated. Yeah, That's okay. you will. You will definitely do that. <laughs> okay, okay. I can do that. But for the fun fact today, the most important question I have for you is, did you figure out why we need a bell founder? I didn't even figure out what a bell founder is. A uh, person who makes bells. A bell maker. Are you sure about that? Yeah, I am. Because Matt calls it a bell maker yep. and then she corrects him and is like, no, not a bell maker, a bell founder. Yeah, it, for me, it's close enough. Is it though? Is it? What if it's something different? Well, based on the dictionary, it's someone who makes bells. Oh, okay. <laughs> but I mean. <laughs> okay. 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 More specifically, it's the casting and tuning of large bronze bells in a foundry for use such as in churches, clock towers, public buildings, etc., etc. So it's not just a bell maker. No, no, but the question is... It's a person who, like, tends to the bells. Yeah. And, like, makes the big bells. Yeah, so did you kind of follow the conversation between Matt and Aludra? No. Okay, so that's the fun fact for today. So I'm gonna... Oh, cannons. Yeah. Yeah, they want to make cannons. They want to make cannons. And they need a bell founder to make cannons because they cast the cannon tubes. Oh, okay. Cannons don't exist yet in this world. Right. But they're about to. Maybe, yeah. So here's the thing. For the fun fact, we got to talk about the actual invention of the cannon. So way back in like the Great Hunt, we talked about the invention of fireworks and gunpowder. That's right. And And, matches. Yeah, and originated in China. So it makes sense that when we look at the history of cannons, also originating in China. Yeah, Sometime. and you know, I actually do a lesson with my students. About cannons? About fireworks. Oh, awesome. Okay. And the creation of fireworks in China when alchemists were trying to make gold. Okay. And they came up with all these different powders from different metals <laughs> that when you set them on fire, they change color. Yes. So. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So they originated in China sometime during the 12th and 13th centuries. And it was probably developed alongside an earlier gunpowder weapon called the Fire Lance. But we're not talking about a Fire Lance today, we're talking about the cannons. So the result was a projectile weapon in the shape of a cylinder that fired projectiles using the explosive pressure of gunpowder. And by the Middle Ages, large and small cannons were developed for siege and field battles, and eventually they replaced other siege weapons like the trebuchet. And Matt makes a reference to the catapults. Mm -hmm. So same idea, cannons took place of that. Mm Mm-hmm. And then basically from there, things escalated quite quickly. But the earliest known depiction of a cannon is a sculpture dating to around 1128 that shows a figure carrying a vase-shaped, or dare I say bell-shaped, cannon Mm. that's firing flames and a cannonball. And sometimes descriptions of these battles say that the enemy troops used a weapon shaped like a bell that made noise like a thunderclap and shot out thousands of iron balls. So... Cool, that's a good weapon. Yeah, and literally 
some earlier cannons looked like giant bells. So that is why we need a bell founder. Okay. Okay, we're making cannons. In need of a bell founder. Well, maybe. Maybe we are. Yeah. I think Aludra is. It's, yeah. Well, I mean. Depending on what Matt. The entire conversation of like how it goes is like that's where well, we're sure. maybe pointing. Mm-hmm. At hopefully at some point in the future. Right. Okay. All right, so last time we were here, Cat Swain was up to some of her usual business, you know, of controlling everyone. Yep. The Forsaken had an alliance meeting, and it got even more confusing for me. <laughs> okay, but Landfear's back. Potentially. No, you took a hard stance. You, know. <laughs> you did. You don't get to backtrack on that now. Okay, whatever. <laughs> whatever about that one. Okay. We also met the daughter of the Nine Moons, so that's exciting. Yep. Her name is Tuon. And she's on a ship rolling into Ebu Dar. Yes, and we might be able to timestamp this. Okay. Okay. So, we last left Matt after a wall fell on him at the end of Crown of Swords. Yes. Yeah. And no one in our crew really knows where he is Mm -hmm. at all. Yes. Mm -hmm. Some people speculate on where he is. Some people think he's places he's not. Definitely that. But no one is for sure. Yeah. No, The only I mean, people like, who know he got left behind didn't tell anyone that he got left behind. And don't seem too concerned. No, not really at all. Mm-mm. Not concerned enough. Mm-mm. It's nope. Matt. It's, it's Matt. Matt. It's Matt. He's going to be, he's fine. <laughs> well, good. Yeah. And I mean, sort of, because we're also going to have to take a bit of a callback to all the terribleness that Matt's going through. Just so. a lot of... Oh, it made me so sad. I know. You thought you were I done with it. I thought you would like, escape okay. <laughs> it somehow. Uh, nope. We're no, not, not it's yet. it's actually even worse. But there's a plan, and we get the return of other main character... Well, not main character. Major awesome characters. Like who? Val and Luca. Oh, Val and Luca. I thought you were going to say, like, Besselin or something. Oh, I mean, he's pretty cool, nah, too. Nah, that guy sucks. <laughs> <laughs> the greatest showman is back. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that is. We that got. Is thing, true. We got. Which we got I also to talk get about. a gold star for because I said he was gonna come back. Yeah, I mean technically he's back. I We're, did say yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of callbacks we got to do here. Okay, let's get into it then. Okay. So chapter fifteen, in need of a bell founder. The chapter symbol is the five dice, and we enter in a Matt perspective. So Matt is sitting on a stool inside a box-like wagon, and he thinks. His broken leg and ribs were near enough healed and the cuts he had suffered when that whole bloody building fell on his head. Yeah, so he is getting, like, we got a bit of a time estimate because he had time to naturally heal from a broken leg and ribs. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's got to take a while, so. Well, yeah, it's been a book and a half. (laughs) Yeah, a couple months at least. Yes, So yeah. Now he's hoping for a little bit of sympathy here. Yeah, because, you know, women love giving sympathy. Mm -hmm. If you play it right. If you play it right. If you play it right, and then they do. There's a whole backstory of, like, mass thought processes on women this chapter. I know, it's all weaved in there. Yeah. But right now, he's focusing his attention on Aludra. Yeah, and (laughs) when was the last time we saw Aludra? Well, was she with Luca's Circus? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. like in Fires of Heaven. Yeah. And then in Lord of Chaos... Tom and Matt have a conversation about Aludra, how Tom had run into Aludra, but then they pretended not to know each other in the circus. Oh, right. So we got a reference to her in Lord of Chaos, but we haven't actually seen her since book five. Right. Okay. But Matt is telling Aludra, listen, by now, you have to know that the Shanchen won't look twice at fireworks. They have the Damani, who do the thing called the skylights. And then Aludra's like, I've never seen these skylights. But in any case, I will not give you the guild secrets. Yeah, because Eludra is like currently like mixing up gunpowder from what it looks like mm-hmm. because it's the black powder and Matt's like, oh, that's the stuff that I saw inside the fireworks back when I was cutting them open, mm-hmm. but I still don't understand how fireworks work. Right. So, that's what he needs to know. Yeah. And that's part of the He's guild secrets. He's been obsessed with yeah. fireworks forever. Yeah. And there's also something to remember about Eludra. So... Tom and Matt rescued Aludra in the barn. That's right. Because Tammuz is the guy from the Kyran and Chapter House. They got she got kicked out after Rand and Loyal and Lanfear basically right. blew it up. In book two. In, yeah. And then, and then Aludra Tom went on the run. Yeah. 
found Aludra, Tom and Matt found Aludra in a barn. Yes. Running from Tammuz in book three. And Tammuz was accusing Aludra of selling the guild secrets to pay her way now that she was like kicked out of the guild. Mm, so Aludra's okay. pretty defensive about like, I didn't sell guild secrets. That's true. And I'm not doing that. And here she's still like, I'm not doing it, man. Mm hmm. But we basically get that it's taken him days to get her to even this point in the conversation. And then we get a bit of a recap about how he sort of wandered into Val and Luca's traveling show yeah, and found her here. To veer his way into it a little bit. Basically. Yeah. And then Matt tells her, but you're not an illuminator anymore, remember? And then he starts to say, they kicked you out. Yeah. <laughs> but then he changes it to, you left the guild. Yeah. <laughs> On good terms. The best, even. And then he thinks back to the whole barn incident. We get a recap. Yeah. And then Matt tells her, besides, I'll bet you'll never see another Illuminator again. Ah, that's the wrong thing to say. <laughs> ah, and then Aludra goes quiet and then demands he tell her what he knows. Yeah. And then he beats around the bush a little saying, oh, just some gossip. But then he tells her the whole story. Yeah, so the whole story being the guild of Illuminators doesn't exist anymore because the chapter I was in Kyrian got abandoned yep. all, like a long time ago. And then the one in Tanchico is now gone officially because when the Shanshan invaded, the Illuminators, being stubborn, refused to let anybody inside the compound and they tried to fight back, but you can't fight back against the Shanshan. No, you cannot. So they broke their way in and then something happened. Probably someone like took a lantern or a flame or they shouldn't because it's a fireworks factory and then half the compound exploded. <laughs> right. And then the Shanshan thought that the, one of the Illuminators used the one power. So the Shanshan gathered up everyone left alive in the chapter house. And basically across all the lands they, con they conquered, every Illuminator is now Dakoval, so their property. Yeah. There's no more Illuminators except for Eludra. So the sad news is we are never going to ever get to the fireworks factory. Never. Never again. It's gone. Yeah. There is no fireworks factory anymore. Ugh. Yeah. So sad. Sorry. There you go. Too terrible. Yep. Too <laughs> terrible. But you know what? Aludra's really stubborn. Oh, and yeah. she straight up says, you're wrong. And as long as one Illuminator lives, the guild lives too. And I'm still alive. It's like, I guess so. Technically, and then I want to be maybe. like, but they kicked you out. <laughs> yeah. You're not an Illuminator. <laughs> but there's none left to remember her getting ah, kicked out. Oh, that's right. right. Okay. And then she asks Matt, what would you do if I did give you the fireworks? Hurl them at the Shanchen from a catapult? Yeah. Because that's a stupid idea. Yeah, and I love it because Matt's like, what? What's wrong with that idea? Because I've totally that been thinking about that. That is my <laughs> idea. Well, he blew up half the side of tear with fireworks. Yeah, he blew up the stone of tear. It was it's great. Like, and that was just like the little ones that she gave him. Yeah. That worked pretty freaking well. Yeah, it was great. Yeah. Anyways, that was plan one. And now that she called it stupid, he also has He's plan like, two. I got a better idea because I saw those tubes... That you use to throw the fireworks into the sky. Yeah, the little launcher guys. Yeah. I don't think they're little. They're like 100 paces long or something. No, 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 no. So they launch the fireworks like 300 paces into the air. Oh! So he's like, hey, if you tip one of those tubes sideways, you could probably launch it a 1,000 yards because, you know, physics and stuff. Ah! Yeah. So mm -hmm. he was like, okay, like get, like, get those, and that's the start of the cannon idea that we're talking, because he's yes. saying, put a tube on the side and launch fireworks. And those tubes are way smaller than a catapult. Yeah. And if they're hidden enough, the Shanchen won't know where they came from. Yeah, because, like, a catapult is gigantic, so you can't hide that, but he's like, little tube. Mm -hmm. And then that leads into the conversation where Aludra kind of is like, hey, you know, that's a pretty good idea for someone who just found out about the lofting tubes a few days ago. But I've thought about this for a long time. Yep. I've, ha I've had reasons to think about this and I have some ideas. Mm. Because again, this is the woman who's like invented matches in her right, world. Yes. So, yeah. So what she, did she call them? Oh, man. Some kind of sticks? Something sticks. Just sticks, I think it was. Just sticks? I think it was sticks. And it wasn't that like a bad name it or something? It was a bad name. Yeah. And she's like, ah. Oh, come up with a better name or tom said that or yeah. something yeah i can't remember exactly who said what pretty sure she was just calling them sticks though mm -hmm. yeah. anyways so she says hey matt i'm gonna give you a puzzle i want you to think about this you tell me why i might want to find a bell founder and then i might tell you all my secrets if you know because with no information basically he's come up with like yeah the startings of a canon and now knowing what a bell founder is she should definitely work with him they, sh they should they probably should team up. A hundred percent. In like two or three days. Okay. Yeah. Maybe if Matt gets back here. Well, <laughs> there's a lot of things maybe happening in the next it two or three days It feels like now. Matt's not going to get back here. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> yep. 
Okay. And then he starts trying to figure it out on the spot. Yeah, and she's like, no, 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 not yeah. here right now. <laughs> yeah, go, come back in three days, go away, you're distracting me. Yeah, well, because in his mind, too, because he's like, okay, bell founders, they make bells. Does she want, like, alarm bells or, like, a gong for, like, the time in the city? Like, what? what's going on? But knowing that they cast the big metal tubes, mm-hmm. it, it makes a lot of sense. Okay. All right, now we're about to launch into what's going on with Matt in his life. Oh, man, yeah, and, like, skip it? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> skip uh, most of it. It's just not great. There's so, so much. <laughs> I know, and so Aludra's like, ah, I might think of kissing you if you didn't belong to another already. Remember? And then uh. that leads into the whole description and explanation about Matt's current situation, because the Shanchen showed up in Abu Dhar, and unfortunately, that did not stop the whole Thailand thing. I know, and a lot of times you think, oh, we're done with Thailand, right? Maybe yeah. she'll get replaced. Maybe she'll die. No, no. she's still here because <laughs> she swore the dumb Ah, gosh. Uh. Okay, so long story short, while Matt was injured, Thailand took care of him and then had all his clothes hidden, and so now he has to wear whatever she supplies him to wear, yeah. which is the worst yep. that anybody's ever seen. Lace and fanciness and... Short coats. Sh- to show off your butt. Yeah. Yep. Tons of bright clothes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's not so great for him. Matt just tells Aludra he'll be back in a few days, and he leaves the wagon, and now he's all grumpy, thinking yeah. about hating his current situation. Yeah. Yeah. So he still has a scarf, his hat, his knives, his medallion. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, Pips. He still has Pips technically, but he can't get he Pips out of the can't stable. Get Pips. Yeah. Right. So okay, mm-hmm. it's yeah. not a good situation. No. And then we get a bit of an update on yeah. <laughs> Val and Luca's grand traveling show and magnificent display of marvels and wonders. I love it! Yay! Ah. He really is the greatest showman. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And we get that it is about 50 times as large as what Tom had told him. I know, that's so funny. More. So he's picked up a lot of stragglers along the way. Well, it's really funny because when Stragg- we left stragglers, stragglers. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe some stragglers too. <laughs> but when we left Lucas' show in Fires of Heaven, he was already in the process of scooping up people. You might remember like one of the shows got closed down yep. and he's like, I recruited them. I got them. They're yep. part of my show now. Yep. And it's basically he's just expanded that. 50 times he's like a small like a it's large been village a while. I think. yeah yeah plus plus he was pursuing Nynaeve you remember might remember I that I do remember but now we find he's out married. he's married I know okay who's he married to not, not Nynaeve nope someone in his show someone else probably somebody else who is more susceptible to his charms <laughs> and his calves well and now now he has a lot of money probably because he's ah. got a gigantic village of a circus. Yeah, and he definitely still has nice calves. Yes, for sure. It's not Absolutely. mentioned here, but I assume. Well, it's Matt. It's Matt's perspective. No, I know. But even Matt isn't like, and those guys' calves are hot. <laughs> right? <Yeah. laughs> a well-turned calf. Everybody appreciates a well-turned calf. Right, 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 right. <laughs> okay, so this goes on and on for a long time. Description of performances... Some new stuff. I like the rolling and the ball around your arms thing. Yeah. Uh-huh. The whoa. Sure. And like a round. Yeah. That's a good one. Mm-hmm. There's a running on a wheel thing. Uh-huh. I don't know. Yeah. Trapeze maybe? I can't really. Well, definitely trapeze. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's like the main stuff. Yeah. But specifically, Matt eyes the long horse lines yeah. because Luca has hundreds of horses. And this is important because yep. Luca had given shelter to some Shan Chen animal trainer. Yeah. And his reward was a warrant signed by the High Lady Seraph allowing him to keep his animals. Yeah, we learn about the horse lottery later. So that kind of comes into play. Yeah. Where he would have had a bunch of his horses taken away. Oh, for sure he would have. But we also, I want to quiz, test your memory yeah, here. Yeah, Reddit. The Reddit. That those are the elephants. Yes. The what? Sh- what's the handler's name? Well, I can tell you that she beat the shit out of Nynaeve. Sure, or Elaine? Sure was it Elaine? Did. Elaine tried to get her to come with her. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then she was like, "No." I think she did both, and then she also beat up Nynaeve. Yeah, they definitely like separately. They got well. Nynaeve was fighting a lot of people at the circus, and I can't be sure of everyone she fought. Yeah, it was a tough. It was a tough time. It was a tough time for Nynaeve. Yeah. Okay. Um, I know that a different Sean Chen at a different place was named Egyanin. Uh, that's true. Does that count? Uh, nope. Nope. Don't it, tell me. Uh, uh, do you want a hint? No. Just tell me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> How long are we going to go here? I know. Sarandon. 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 And. Nope, I didn't know that yeah, one. Yeah, it, it's a tough one. What was the Shredit's names? 
Yeah, no, I don't oh, you know. you didn't write no, that down. No. Oh, okay. But originally, Sarandon's story was, oh, they are creatures from Shara, and yes. I am also from Shara. That's right. And then the girls were like, no, no. you're Shanshin. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, but it's funny, full circle, you know. Here it's we good. are. She doesn't seem to be here anymore. No. It seems like she's back with the Shanshin problem. Oh, for sure. That's why Luca was like, yeah. cool. Yeah. And the big part about the horses, too, is that Matt is looking at him because he's like, okay, I can have I Van can in. I steal them. Get Van in the, like, So I can get the F out of here. Yes, but broken leg and you ribs. You can't sit in the saddle for very long. It's tough. Mm-hmm. So. Okay, so Matt starts limping along, eyeing all the performers. And he starts to feel super sorry for himself because of the situation he's stuck in as Tylan's pet. And she didn't even really let him heal completely before jumping on him again. He also thinks about how he's Tavirin, and everybody else is probably having an excellent, jolly good time. Yeah, yeah. I love the examples, Like, too. Nine Eve is probably having an excellent time with the kinswomen. For sure. And Elaine's probably queen, having a great time. Awesome. Rand and Perrin are probably drinking wine in front of a fire. Lolling in around. <laughs> palace telling jokes. Yeah. It's like, no, Matt, everybody is having a really terrible time right now. Yes. Except for Rand and Elaine. Okay. They were not having that terrible of a time. Well, for the moment, for a like moment. A, just like a mo- a, cu- a twelve hours. Yeah, span. but it's a better. Yeah. Twelve hour span than Matt has had. Fair. In months. I'll take that actually. So Rand yeah. and Elaine for sure. Yes. Except that Rand keeps having people trying to murder him. I mean, yeah, and... that comes with the territory. Yeah. 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 But that does lead into the whole color swirling with color Matt. swirling. So That's he's right. getting that. But I mean, it's also kind of funny because the- I wish. That that would end, and I would figure out what that means. Oh, okay. Yeah. Maybe that's all it is. No. Okay. <laughs> no, we're not no, done with that? No, it's not. Okay. Anyways, there's also the whole thing about Matt needs to be in Abu Dhar, probably, yeah. for events to line up. Probably. So it's like, how do you keep like Matt? Like how he has to meet Tuan, the daughter of the Nine Moons. It kind of seems like we're hurling towards that plot. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. The next chapter was... Yeah titled for yeah uh, I mean, it was yeah, pretty much set up that way th- that's fair and so. then it wasn't that <laughs> you give it time uh, it's maybe, not like she's gonna come off the I'm, boat and go skipping down and be like ah oh, there's matt well i thought that's the maybe, guy i thought maybe <laughs> how are they gonna meet yeah they're gonna run into each other yeah somehow and she is like the highest ranking person oh, that's probably why she'll be she'll be in the palace like maybe oh for sure okay because okay, she talked about somewhere. how she's gonna meet seroth yeah and Seroth is in the palace. She's staying there. Yeah, yeah. She literally lives in the palace. Yeah. And Okay, so we're getting we're getting to a point we'll where there. we might meet. For sure. Okay, cool. Yeah. Tylen won't like that. <laughs> Maybe Matt's like, ah, my escape, and then he gets himself into a deeper, terrible, more terrible problem. Right. Because, like, what's worse, being with Tylen or being with Tuon? Mm-hmm. With the Shan Chen. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because we do get a mention, I don't know which chapter it's in, Yeah. but in these two chapters, Matt thinks about... How Tylen, it would be the worst if she makes him marry her. Yeah, he's like, and I already know. And then he's know. like, but I can't marry her because I'm fated to marry the dang daughter it's of the Nine literally Moons. destiny, yeah. Yeah. But like, how does he stop it? Yeah, if she wants that. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good question. Mm-hmm. Well, no time for that now. No, none, yeah. actually. <laughs> So basically, all Matt really wants to do is get away from Ebudar and take the fireworks secret with him, of course. For sure. And then he goes and sees Tom and Beslin. Yeah. And at first, I have no idea who this is. This is not Beslin? a name. Yeah, it's not a name I remember. Oh. I mean, I know. Party guy. He's frat boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So as we go on, obviously, I'm like, oh, Tylen's son. Yeah. And it comes back to me. And I remember the character. But if you had asked me. Who's Beslin? Last time we recorded, no, what's the name of Tylen's son? Oh, you wouldn't remember Beslin? No, okay. I didn't remember it. Your memory of names does not bode well for our later conversations. Let's just let's just say that. Which later conversations? The one that we're going to have later on tonight. Oh, tonight? Oh, yeah, we're going to have a conversation. Sometimes random names stick in my brain. Yeah, we're going to see. We're going to see. Okay, well, anyway, Beslin and Tom are here. Yeah, they're cool with Luca, and Luca's good with them. But Luca doesn't really like Matt. Yeah, we don't really get an explanation as to why. Probably because of his clothes. Okay. Because we get that Luca flourishes his cape. As Luca he... is like over the bo- yeah. top, like tinkerish even. And I think that even. he thinks that Matt is... Trying to show him up as the greatest yes. showman. Yes. 
Another greatest yeah, showman comes into my circus. Matt specifically grabs his co- cloak with like both of his hands and is like, "Cloak is for work, <laughs> not for showing well, off." Well, you know what? You know what? Lucas should do is team up with Matt and give him ten percent of the business. Ah, because when your Zac Efron and they comes could in, sing a song about they could it. sing a song, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Negotiations happen; they settle on ten. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Yeah. I love that number. I know. That's what happened in the greatest <laughs> that showman. That is yeah. what happens. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Okay, so they're chatting, everything's going on, and then Matt's like, ugh, there's someone who should be here who isn't. Ugh. And so he glances over at a cluster of women nearby, mm. and he heads over to see Oliver. Yeah, you can, I, I don't even want to say anything. I just like, So they found him. Yeah. They found Oliver. I mean, yeah, he's not dead. That's, no, that's, that's good. the point. Yeah, okay, because okay. Because literally the reason yeah, Matt, Matt didn't, come. didn't go and Tom didn't with come the women and, uh, like was the because people. freaking Oliver... Yeah. It's not even Oliver's fault. Gone. It's not Oliver's fault because he was supposed to be taken care of. And then they're like, ah, he's off. He's gone. By He'll be the back chick in... with the big boobs. Right. Anyways, I don't want to say anything about the comments that well, he's making. Well, it's inappropriate and... and... I don't understand the reactions and... They think it's funny because he's obviously a little child. Saying like super weird stuff. I about don't know. their prettiest eyes and Look lips. at your lips and your neck and it's like, yeah, how old? This kid's like, like 10. Oh, so cute. So sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Which feels old to put on your shoulders. It does. Yeah, it does. For like a crippled old man with a limp? Yeah. Tom just flings so him a, up on his shoulders? Keep in mind, Oliver is like a small for his age, malnourished child. Who he shouldn't be at this point. He was. So like his growth was probably stunted. Okay. He's not as big as he could be. Still. Yeah. That whole thing later. Big. Don't buy it. I. It was weird. It's as bad as the ice thing. No, because even our four-year-old, I don't really feel that comfortable yeah. with him up on the sh- my shoulder. And I don't have a broken leg. Yeah, and I'm not super old. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. It was. So. That was like the most unbelievable thing. Yeah. That happens here. You know what a funny thing? And I. I <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> totally. I don't buy it. I don't buy it at all. So here's the thing, though, because being in Matt's head. We know Matt is like the most unreliable narrator of most characters. Mm-hmm. Like he's pretty unreliable. Yeah. And at some point in the next two chapters, he thinks about, hey, he's being raised by a bunch of like soldiers and I'm the only good influence on him. Mm-hmm. So he yep. has that thought process. Yep. And I want to know what you think about it that. It says, the lad had a fistful of uncles looking after him and everyone except Matt himself was a bad influence. So this is, so do you think that Matt is being accurate in that? Because we see Matt give all of her advice on how yeah. to treat women yeah. and do he, things. Okay, so Matt scoops him up. And he's like, oh, I'm sorry, I don't know where he picks it up. And then he's like, hey, listen, Oliver, you're going to get yourself in trouble talking to women like that. Women like men to be quiet and well-mannered and reserved and a little shy. And then Oliver gives him an incredulous stare. And then Matt's like, well, that's weird. I'm an excellent influence. Yeah. So that's the question is like, is Matt actually a good influence? Because like from what we see Matt do, he seems like a pretty good influence. And from what we see from the other guys around him, they're the bad influences. Maybe. So is Matt being accurate in this, or is he just um, like, or are well, they all bad? like, lately, maybe. Yeah. But even in his conversation with Aludra, who there's, like, zero chance yeah. that anything is going to happen with, he's still thinking the entire time about her kissable lips. Yeah. And her taking her for a cuddle. He can think and, whatever he wants to, yeah. but he's not around Oliver at that point. He can act however he want to when there's not kids around. Yeah. And, but when... Oliver's I think around. Before, I think before. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think before he got here, I think that yes, I mean, Oliver probably would. Kids pick up on things. Yeah, but right? everybody rags on Matt for being a bad like all like nine even Elaine. I'm pretty sure they're yeah. ragging on him. Like Bergito was ragging on him for being a ter- Avienda. I think was well, getting in on that. He so is a womanizer. He is. But is he in front of Oliver? Probably. He probably yeah, was. We don't see it, though. That's what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, no, except we for sure did. <laughs> we saw them in, like, a tavern together. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm okay. sure at some point, yes. All right, that's that's the major, okay, that's the big question of the chapter. Yeah, that's okay. and we also know that everything Matt thinks, the opposite actually is true. That's the other issue with yeah. Matt's thought process. Mm-hmm. It is an interesting set of skills that he's getting right now, like Oliver, because he literally has, like, Tom, Court Bard of Andor, teaching him how to juggle and tell stories and stuff. And then Beslin, who's like a good fighter, is teaching him how to use a sword. And the other band members, like Vannon's like the best horse thief in the world, is teaching Oliver stuff. So, like, he does seem to be getting an interesting mix of, like, really good 
tutors yeah. and mentors in like a very unique subset of skills. Yeah. And like Matt's like, I'm going to teach you the staff and the bow and Matt's really good at right. stuff. So and it's kind of cool. And that chick with the boobs is teaching him to read. Well, and it's, but it sounds like she's just reading to him. Not, it's yeah. not like a <laughs> reading lesson. <laughs> well, <laughs> maybe, maybe they take turns. It's, que- it's questionable. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Getting back into this though. Right. Luca leaves with a flourish, and then Matt asks Tom, has he agreed yet? And Tom is like, well, yes, sort of. We can travel with him when he leaves Abu Dhar for a price. He's overcharging us by a ton. Yeah. But he doesn't think we're criminals since we're free, and he knows we're running away from something. But the thing is, he doesn't intend to leave until spring at the earliest. Yeah, and that's like the biggest hiccup in the plan because the money doesn't really matter to Matt. And, yeah. you know, they're not running from anyone technically. They're not like wanted by the Shanshan, so right. Luke is not going to get in trouble. Yeah. But it is the springtime thing that's the worst part. That's too long. Yeah. Matt doesn't want to stay here being Tylan's pet any longer than he has to. Yeah, so... We might have to go with Vanna and stealing horses and then, like, escape that way. We'll see. Yeah. All right. And then at the topic of Matt leaving, Beslin gives him a look and is like, ooh, my mother won't be happy when she learns I'm helping her pretty leave Ebu Dar. Yeah. She'll marry me <laughs> to someone with a squint and a mustache like a Terraboner foot soldier. Yeah, Terraboners have the big, thick ones. Okay. So Beslin's not saying he won't marry someone with a mustache. He just doesn't like the thick mustaches. Ah, it's an important... <laughs> I don't think that that's what he's saying. <laughs> okay, so Matt winces. We get a recap on how Beslin is Tylan's son. That's a whole thing. Yeah. However, Beslin does believe that Tylan has become a little too possessive of Matt, so he's what? willing to help. Yeah, and like what point pushed you over the yeah. too possessive Well, because he's point. not able to really do anything on his own. Yeah. Like, it's not like, oh, they're just fooling around together. Like, this is... For sure. Uh, Clearly an issue. Yeah, and Beslin himself has changed a little bit since the invasion happened. Yeah. Because he used to be the party guy, frat boy, like, let's go fight and get some women. Yeah. And now he's more serious because, I mean, Tylan's his mom, so it does make sense. Well, there's a lot going on with the the Shanshan invasion. Yeah, yeah. Like, they're not the safest they could be. No. So finally, Oliver asks if they can get back to the palace because he has his reading lesson with Lady Rizelle. And then everyone starts laughing about her boobs and Matt starts groaning, but not because of his leg or because of this conversation. It's because the dice start tumbling in his head. Yeah. And he knows something bad is coming his way. Something very bad. Okay, so what are the dice for? I sure hope it's two on. Well, that kind of makes sense. Like big life-changing well, events, Well, I don't actually right? really hope it, but I don't want this to drag out any longer. You sure, know what I mean? Sure, and I, I mean, want the encounter. The dice can go forever, though. Like, who knows? But I just it... said that because I read the chapter title, An Unexpected Encounter. <laughs> nah, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. But I want that other encounter yes. also. Yes, yeah. Yeah, and we know the dice from next chapter are not the golem, so, like, what is it? It could be two uh, on. What's going on? Yeah. It could be. And we know that she was literally rolling up uh-huh. into Ebu Dar. Rolling up? Yeah. Like rolling dice? Ah, nice. That was head. terrible. Yeah. That was terrible. Yeah. And, I mean, it could line up because once they get back into the city, there's all the people who seem to be literally coming off the boats. So oh, yes. So, timeline, it could possibly be. Oh, she'll probably be there when he gets back to the palace. It could be. Yeah. It could be. Could be. There's also like hundreds of ships that need to dock and unload. So yeah. Who goes who's, first? Who's to say? Probably Tuan goes first. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So that's the end of this chapter. Let's take a quick break and then come on back. Sounds good. All right. And we're back. Yeah. So let's get into chapter 16, An Unexpected Encounter. Excellent. It was unexpected. Yeah. Okay. This was unexpected. Yeah. You know, yeah. if it was two on, this chapter could be called an expected encounter. By you, the reader. I feel it. Yeah, exactly. That's what I mean. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But unexpected <laughs> for Matt. That's what I thought we were going for. Yeah, yeah. But no, unexpected for everybody. Yeah, a little this bit. This was unexpected. So, chapter symbol, the wheel and snake. And we continue with Matt. We get that the crew is walking back to Ebu Dar because Val and Luca's show is like two miles. Yeah, it's out literally of the, city. the size of a large village. Yeah. So it it's not close. <laughs> no. And so he's getting sort of exercise for his leg, but then it's actually hurting his leg. It's a whole thing. A little we bit get a whiny, description. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, we get a description of Ebu Dar. In case you forgot, it's really white. 
And then there's an update about how the Shanchen invasion didn't really affect trade in the city very much because that's pretty much the point for the Shanchen. Yeah, it's pretty cookie cutter. Like they did the exact same thing where you swear the oaths, you don't do crime, and then basically life goes on for most people except for women who can channel. Yeah. But generally, yeah. generally people's lives are the same. Yeah. I bet if we could somehow abolish slavery, Uh uh we could probably live with the Shanchen. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We're probably going to have to deal with this crystal throne at some point. That's a pretty fundamental part of the Shanchen, But that's like literally one person. The the Empress? Yeah. Yeah. I I mean, okay. Mm -hmm. But she, like, even if you kill her. But like, we deal with nobles the same way we deal with nobles here. Okay. We abolish the slavery. Yeah. Of women who can channel. Yeah. And then. Yeah. We can sort of. But then you have to like reteach people that yeah. demoni aren't It'll like take literally a couple not. Generations. Sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, there's, there's. We're not going to go into the whole how do we fix this. Mm-hmm. We. But you're asking <laughs> me. You have been asking yeah. me like how do we get rid of the Shanchen? Maybe the answer is. We can't. Well, that's actually the point of this chapter. Yeah. And that thinks about that is like, we don't. Yeah. You don't get rid of, they are here permanently. They are here. That's, ha- that's so happening. So now we just need to work on changing their rules. Yeah. And it, I mean, on a subtle level, that is what makes this chapter interesting because that is the point is that the Shanshan are something that is here to stay. Mm-hmm. They aren't going anywhere. And no. even at the beginning of the series, it's like, okay, we pushed them away. Except- Can we push them away again? They're never going back to Shanshin. I do have to tell you yeah. that you should not be bringing your weird chickens and ducks here. Oh, oh, invasive species, right? Yes. Oh, my goodness. And your wheat varieties. Uh-huh. You at least need Border Patrol to, like, look into this, do studies. You can't. You can't just bring in your strange fowl. Oh, man. And what about... Your oh, strange livestock. I didn't can't even have come time. here. I'm pretty sure they're all based on, like, the long-haired goats or something. Like, I'm pretty sure those are yes. all yaks or something like there's i'm definitely sure that i'm pretty sure that they're based on real animals or they are real animals Probably. that are they stuck in mm-hmm. there but yeah you got to be cautious about that yeah mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i don't know why like it feels as though for a thousand years they had a pretty good life and setup over on chanchen yeah but now we're coming home to the land that was stolen but from imagine our a thousand years yeah goes by yeah and you're like I'm going to leave this place. But you're also assuming that they have a choice in this too. Mm. Because Shanshin seems pretty like you're told what you're doing. And if you're drafted to be one of those who returns, then those who do. comes home, then you, you go. It just seems... And there's the honor, the yeah. glory of it. Like they do have a different social setup and yeah. like honor but you're system. Just like, everybody's just like, yep, abandoning everything. Yeah, like, man, even maybe. the farmers and the whatever, like, they literally just, like, get on a boat with their fucking goats so here's the thing. and their chickens. Okay, maybe and you're... then they're like, we're gonna go live somewhere <laughs> okay. else now. Okay, remember like, when what? we talked about the size of Shanshan? <laughs> it's crazy. Remember when we talked about the size of Shanshan? Yeah. How it is so much bigger than Ranland? Mm-hmm. Shanshan is not, like, deserted now. No. It's not like a, you know, everyone picked up... But I think the plan on... is for it to be one day deserted, no, isn't it? No, no. Oh, not at they're all. gonna keep Shanshan. Yeah. And then they're, they're also resettling the resettling Randland. Okay. So these yeah. are people who are like, I'd like to help. Yeah. And they bring their stupid chickens and goats. Yes. Okay. Our chickens and goats are gonna kill your chickens and goats and, and then we'll just all live the here. The chickens and goats will die and then the people will also die. Well, they'll just eat their weird chickens and goats. <laughs> it's it's gonna be fine. It's fine. Plus plus we have like literal magic, and I'm pretty sure there's a weave that's like, you know, don't, you know... What? I don't know. Something about, you know, gardening and <laughs> lawn care. I don't know. <laughs> well, that's what the green eyes is for, remember? <laughs> I love that. I, there should be. There should there be. There should be a gardening ash. You know what? I was 100% for your color scheme system. Mine was better than the actual one. Debatably, yeah. It is better than the current You know setup. why? Because it was logical and the last it was thing... logical. The white tower... Does well. Your green logic. aja was because pl- you're like, ah, oh, plants are green, therefore green must be for plants. It's like other things could be green, or it doesn't have to be like a color coded system. Well, it was. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Listen. Listen, lady. We got a lot to talk about. Actually, we don't have much yeah. to talk about. That's why. Uh, we <laughs> got some. We got some stuff to talk about. So they get basically back. And hey, there's lots of people. And hey, there's a lot of shots. There's Suldam and Damani acting as guards, but yeah. generally everyone's behaving 
Yeah. We get a whole explanation. We get the horse lottery. The horse lottery. Horse lottery. One in five horses were taken from locals. One in ten from Outlanders. Because they don't want to be like, oh, don't come here because we're going to steal your horse. Except that it's possible they're going to steal your horse. Well, they pay for it, but not like market value because things are kind of outrageously priced right now. So, mm. you know, it's tough. Okay. Well, anyways, the more interesting thing is as they enter the city, yes. there's a long platform with spikes that are displaying recognizable heads of over a dozen men and two women who fell to Shanchen justice. Yep. And below each head is a little thing announcing the crime that they committed, whether yep. it's murder, rape, violent robbery, assault on the blood, yep. whatever. And then we learn that two of the heads say rebellion. Yeah, this is And they are the mistress of the ships of the sea folk and her master of the blades. Yeah, so that's Nesta. And I want to know, do we know them? Yeah, that's Nesta. Nesta. Nesta Dinreus Two Moons, Mm. the queen of the Athan Mare who made the bargain with Nynaeve and Elaine. Maybe she thought that her two moons was better than the nine moons mm. and then that's why they had a fight or more likely she was like i'm not gonna bend my neck to your stupid rules yeah, i hate your rules yeah you and they're like suck. okay we're gonna chop your head off and then they did. and then the master of the blades we saw him in that meeting too is barak mm-hmm. so they are both uh dead now which is interesting so does that mean the bargain is done well, I don't know. Depends on how you define that bargain. That's how I define Probably it. Probably not. Probably bargain not. Bargain over. Probably not. <laughs> but here's it's a the dumb thing. bargain anyway. Keep in mind. So Nesta, being the mistress of the ships, she has a windfinder. Yeah. And we know her windfinder, and it's Renail or Renaila, who's currently with Elaine. Oh. I was going to say Elaine and Nynaeve, but Nynaeve's no longer Nynaeve's there. Nynaeve's out of here. Yeah. <laughs> but that's Renail or Renaila. Mm-hmm. And we also learned just a couple chapters ago that when the mistress of the ships or a wave mistress, when she dies, her windfinder goes back to being at the lowest level of the sea folk hierarchy. Oh, no. Yeah, because we had Renaila. literally, we had the windfinder of the previous mistress of the ships who was in that Tala'an meeting. Oh, who was like and top level, and then she got bumped down to the lowest. So now Renee is going to get bumped down to the bottom of the hierarchy. And she doesn't even know. Doesn't even know. How is she going to find out? Yeah, that's a question to be asked and maybe answered. And also, we don't find out how many Sea Folk Windfinders are here now as Damane. Hmm, all of them, maybe. Because okay, it's we not kind good. of skipped over. The Shanchen and Damani who are walking around. I said Shanchen. Suldam and Damani just yep. walking around. Yep. The Suldam are all carrying an extra Adam like around, a yeah. <laughs> around their arm yeah. in case they happen across They're any, always ready for it, yeah. any wild channelers. Yeah, and also for anyone who comes into the city to trade, it's like they test everyone at the docks, on the land. I mean, it's a pretty big, like, I mean, you it's know. a good recruiting system, but it's... <laughs> I mean, if we're going for straight slavery for a recruiting system, yeah, it works. It's yeah. effective. I'm not saying it's good, but it's certainly effective. No, the recruiting system is good. What we do when we find them is bad. Sure, sure. I said I could adopt the, like, let's test everybody yes, method. they could. And then give options if they want to join the ranks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then if they say no, that's when you clap the collar on them. Well, I think there that's kind of what Egwene is attempting to do. She's, yeah, yep. Sort of. She's also taken some of the choice out of being attached to the tower. Out of oh, well, so. that part. Yeah, no. Anyways. You can channel your attached that's fine. to the tower. That's fine. So but anyways. you're not a literal <laughs> slave animal. Yeah. Yep. So it's better. Oh, yeah. Yep. No, for sure. Anyways, so they're dead, and that's sad. And now there's tons of people everywhere bringing all their livestock and yeah. all their grains. Well, because literally Matt and Tom and Basil, they, like, stop walking. They're like, oh, wait, it's usually busy, but, like, this is... It's almost as if, like, a thousand ships worth of people just docked. Yes. <laughs> and they're all coming. Mm-hmm. And that's when we get that, like, oh, the the return is happening. This the is it. The return has arrived. Yeah. And then Matt thinks to himself that he's been thinking that this return that the Shanchen kept talking about was going to be some sort of invasion, like a gigantic army. Yeah. But now he's realizing that it's not an army, it's settlers. Yes, it's an army of settlers. And... People are coming with supplies to set up their businesses, to set up farms, to set up their new lives here. And Matt thinks it's an army, all right, but not the sort that he imagined. 
Because this kind of army would be harder to fight than soldiers. Yeah, because you don't just like, you can't just kill every settler. Yeah, it's like, that's not how it works. They're permanently here. So now it's not a question of like, how do we boot the Shanshan out of Randland? It's like, how do we set up a new system to live with them? That's that's what what it it has to be. Yeah. Like Mm -hmm. you can't, you can't get rid of all these people. No. It doesn't happen. No, and what are you going to do every time they try to invade Alien? Yeah. You're going to use Kalendor, right? Well, that's the thing. Like, even like, if you defeat the standing army of the Shanshan, then you literally just incorporate the people into your way of life now. Well, yeah, again, that so. part, I'm fine. That part, yeah. you know, I guess, fine. Except for their delusional ways of thinking. Exactly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. So, actually, none of this is it fine. It is pretty, t- it's pretty, yeah, it's pretty tough. None of this is fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and he also has another interesting thought process because he's like, hey, it's kind of weird. Like, why are they why all are coming they doing here? Why are they return here and yeah. not Tanchico? But then, then he's he like, thinks, oh, wait, oh, maybe they're wait. not all here. Yeah. And we know that there's like four times as many already in Tanchico. So, yeah. and debatably. And we already know that they have their foreign livestock already over there. Yeah, well, and I was going to say, like, Abu Dhar, of, of all their territory, Abu Dhar is like the questionable territory. So in my mind, it's like you send more troops with the return. So more of the return people here are going to be troops and like send more of the settlers to Tanchico where it's like debatably where it's safer. Where settled. Yeah. Where it's settled. So it's like you are you have a now, permanent land mass here now. here's the, the okay. question. Okay. Are the people who are actually indigenous to this land the settlers? Yeah. Or are the people who are currently living here... Well, that's the tough part, because, like, Archer Hawkwind conquered it from everyone before who had it from everyone before. Right. Who had it from the people before that. So, Where do we start? Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. Yep. It's Mm -hmm. all... That's the Mm -hmm. the hard part. Okay. Oh, my God. There we go. That's That's, a mess. You you did it. You figured it out. It's a hard question. It's a mess. (laughs) It's not easy. So, anyway, at this point, Matt tells Tom and Besslin to go back to the palace with Oliver... And when Besslin tells Matt to not try to buy passage on a ship again because Tylen won't go easy on him this time. Yeah, so... <laughs> Matt's just like, ah, I just want to walk around a little. So apparently that happened. We get the story that he wasn't actually trying to buy passage. He was just asking questions about it. And he had a lot of gold with him at the time. Ah. And then the servants basically, like, carried him back to the palace mm-hmm. after they found that out, so... Right. But anyways. Okay. Well, Tom says... Well, maybe I would walk with you and we could talk. You're very lucky after all. Yeah. So during this walk back into town, there's like a lot of nothing happening. But at one point, Matt overheard Tom and Besslin talking to each other like quietly. And he overheard the words like risky business or something. Okay. So clearly there's a plan going on with Tom and Besslin about something about the Shanshan being here. Right. There's like the undertones of this chapter. And okay. Yeah. And they're planning something. They're planning something. And to- Matt's like, don't do it. And Tom's like, hey, maybe we should talk about it because you are Taviran and super lucky. And with your help, maybe mm. we could make something happen. And then Matt doesn't want to talk about any risky plans. Yeah. Which like, doesn't no. sound like Matt at all. No. It's interesting, too. In these chapters, Matt thinks about how he thinks about whether Tylen has changed him as a person. Ah. Uh. Because well, he's like scared to make a move or do anything. Yes. Yeah. 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 No, he's like very out of his element and he doesn't feel like he's the same person right now. Yeah, that's really sad. It's very sad. Yeah. And again, the whole undertones of this conversation between Tom and Besslin and then trying to get Matt involved in whatever plan this is. Yeah. Matt tells Besslin like straight up, hey man, the Shanshan are here. They're in your home. And if you couldn't stop them from getting in here in the first place, you're not going to push them out now. No. So, like, whatever plan you have is just not going to work. Yeah. And then he says, Rand will deal with them. And then he gets the colors swirling in his head again. Again. Yeah. And then he says, you took that bloody oath to wait on the return. We all did. Yeah. So that answers that question. Matt, again, did swear the oath. Yes. Which, well, that's how he can wander around freely. Yeah. I mean, yeah. there's a big asterisk in his own brain. He's like, well, we all took them, but the option was take the oath or basically be put in chains. Yeah. So it's not really much of a... No. <laughs> I didn't make like an actual oath here. Yeah. But it's not the Shanchen think it is. They do. So it's like yep. until you break it, that's when it becomes an issue. Yeah. Okay, so Besslin tries to push back on this by saying, like, you don't understand, Mother still sits on the throne, 
and she had to lie down with her face on the floor and swear fealty to some woman on the other side of the ocean. Yeah. And Suroth says, I should marry one of the blood and shave the sides of my head, and Mother is listening to her. Yeah, and again, Tylan is literally doing what's keeping them both alive at this point. Yeah. Like, I do kind of give props to Tylan for going along with it. We saw in Tanchico, the like the rulers nobles they get replaced yeah like they'll just get murdered and then they'll put new ones in who are going to listen to the shanshan ways so tylan is literally trying to keep Besson alive by listening and being like yeah marry into their nobility and we can stay alive yeah that was in tylan's entire argument beforehand like she wanted to survive to stay alive to yeah. stay alive for Besson to like succeed her in some way yeah. shape or form that's right so but then matt is like shut up about it already yeah <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead and shut up about it. Yeah. Because anyone could be one of the Shanchen listeners, and they're going to end up with their heads on spikes if they're not careful. Yeah. And then just to wrap up that conversation, Beslin also tells Matt, like, hey, man, you're going to feel different when it's Andor on the line because this is my city. And what yeah. happens to your country, and like, Matt's you're going to feel like, the same joke's way. joke's on you. I don't <laughs> care about Andor at all. It doesn't matter. And my city, my hometown, was under siege, and I didn't go help it. Yeah. So... Perrin was going. Come yeah. on, it's no, fine. I, but it's not. It, Matt doesn't care. No, not at all. It's fine. <laughs> Actually, which is funny, because in this chapter, again, Matt has like a half a second thought process of like, maybe I'd like to go home. Yeah. He does. Because yeah. like, it, w- it would be better to be home, maybe, with the people he grew up with than being here with Thailand. But so, maybe. Maybe. Yeah. It's questionable. And as Matt looks around and thinks anybody could be a listener, he gets a prickle between his shoulders as if he's being watched. Ah, okay. So Which it, makes more he, sense now because now he's being, he's being he's watched. He's actually being watched. Yeah, it's kind of snuck in there a couple of times where it's like, yeah, yeah I feel like I'm being watched. And it's like, because you're being watched. Yeah, it's kind of like whenever we're in Teleron Riyadh. It's like, hey, eight, it just, it 18 just... <laughs> people are literally just sitting. No, no, no. It just always in feels like that. spectator <laughs> booths just watching Teleron Riyadh. Yeah. It always feels that way because they're always watching every conversation you Everything you, ever you do. Very yeah. cool. Okay. So Tom Besslin and Oliver leave. Matt heads off by himself, which I don't really get. He just really wants to avoid Tylen as long as he can. Yeah. To the point where he's starving. Yeah. I mean, he has money. He doesn't have no money. I know. He could feed himself. He could just feed himself. But yeah. is he going to get in trouble for that? Maybe. It's weird. Like why does like why does he walk around to the point where he's starving? Matt's out of his element. And then he's like, I gotta go back to the palace now because if I get back too late, she'll have ordered that I can't have dinner. So here's the thing: we always talk about Dagger Matt, and then it was like Dagger Matt was cursed Matt, mm-hmm. and then we got healed Matt, which was Matt. But now we're kind of in this like Abu Dar Matt, where he's not really Matt. Yeah. Like uh-huh. he's not he's not the guy he's who he's like we a knew. touch too cautious. He's ca- like it's, and he's like doing weird things, yeah. like wandering around just to avoid going there, but then having to go back there. Yeah. His hope is that Tyler has gone to bed already, but yeah. he even knows that that's he's like been futile. suffering under like months of abuse. Like it, it kind of makes sense that he's out of his element here. He's out of his sorts. Yeah, it sucks. It sucks. We don't like this, Matt. We no. want to get. We want Matt to get out of here. No. All right. We we're supposed to get back to Matt, and he was supposed to be like. Matt just needs your better. support. Matt has my support. Okay, then let's be supportive. You can do it, Matt. You can do it. Meet your new maybe. Wander down alleyways <laughs> by yourself for you can sure. Do it. For sure, do that. Well, and it's funny because he's done this so often. He's like, oh, it's a maze of alleys. It reminds you me literally of get lost. walking through Venice. Yes, like tiny little narrow yeah, road. Yeah, we were trying like to alleys. find a one restaurant. Yeah. In a one place. <laughs> And walking down, then the roads become tiny alleys. Become narrower, and it's like, what's happening? Become narrower and narrower between buildings, but they still have street signs. Yeah, and you're like, this is a street? I don't know what's going on. (laughs) This can't be a street. Yeah. Anyways. That's what it reminds me of. Yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah. It makes, yeah, it makes sense. (laughs) But anyways, he's been doing this for a long time, so it's not like this is the first time he's wandered off. He knows these back alleys like the back of his hand. Like, he knows where he's going. But yeah, his thoughts are going. He's thinking about everything because he's got a bunch of situations going. It's like Shanshan, the return, Aludra, the Bell Founder situation, Luca and escaping. Tylen has all of his gold. So like he could hypothetically pay Luca, but he needs to get the gold out of the palace without Tylen knowing about it. Yeah, and that's not really. That's not good. So he's going to have to like sneak it out. Can do. Yeah. yeah, we get the story about him being carried away at the docks because yeah, yeah. they found that's out right. about him. Like yeah. it's a whole bunch of stuff. Okay. But let's get, let's get to it. Okay. 
So, the streets are super crowded, so he wants to go down the back alleys, and he thinks about how the dice are thundering and how they've never been this loud before. Ah, okay. And finally, he's killed enough time to get frustrated enough to go back to the palace and be, quote, the queen's bloody pet. And so he starts heading back through the alleys and back roads to get back to the palace. But oddly enough, he still feels like he's being watched. Crazy. Crazy. Weird. So he's almost at the palace. Yeah. He can, like, see it. It's close. It's close. Real close. Not close enough. And then he slips in some, I don't know, there's lots of mention of him stepping in something that he hopes in mud but smells bad. Is it poop? Is yeah. Is he stepping in I don't piles know. of poop in so these alleys? all the alleys are just, like, pure mud? But he, but he's, like... I hope that was poop. Yeah. Or, and I, I don't hope know. that wasn't it's poop. It's just like general grossness. <laughs> He's I don't like, know. I hope that wasn't mud, but And then he steps on something bad. that's hard and that's what makes him lose his balance. It's like it's weird. I was like, is it ice? I don't know. And then he goes down in like some no freezing water. At least I hope it's water. Yeah. Like it's no, just it's... a pile of what? You know pee? what's you know what's like, not what important is, is what the contents of this poop <laughs> it just... mud <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter what it is, except that he I'm falls in it. it. Out. He fa- don't drag it out because we got something to talk about. Okay. Okay. He falls down. <laughs> he falls down. He twists, he twists himself. So he doesn't fall on his bad leg. And it's like, boom, someone lands on his shoulder and then like rolls out and it's the golem. Aha. Uh-huh. Uh, Here Matt to do realizes murder. realizes the man. It's golem. Yeah. And then we begin this fight sequence and Matt grabs his fox medallion. Yeah, he whips it around. String. He's whipping it around. Yep. Every time it hits the golem, it like sears his skin. Bacon. And we actually see that the golem has a scar on his face from the last time. There we go. So golems can scar. Yeah. Well, keep in mind, when the golem got hit by the medallion, that was the first time it had ever been injured. Yeah. Ever. And now it's like trying to kill him. And Matt has the thought process, like, maybe if I can like hurt him, maybe this will also kill him. Yeah. And the golem is... If I like shove it down his throat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, something like that, right? Like, yeah. how do you how do you kill a golem? Yeah. That's the real question. With this thing, it's scared of. Yeah. Anyways, the medallion hits his face and it sounds like searing bacon, but it smells like burning flesh, which is... Those are two different <laughs> things. Not... Okay. Not great. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, I also, in this fight, we know that Matt has thought a couple of times, like, he's not up in fighting shape right now. Yeah. He doesn't even want to pick a bar fight because he's not in a shape to do it. So, him facing off against the Golam, he's got two things going for him to keep him alive in this fight. Tavirin. Besides the Tavirin thing. Besides that. The mud. It's slippery. The Golam also can't really maneuver very well in this, like, poop water mud. Yeah, okay. It's slipping around, too. So, it's not on, like, the best footing. Yeah, and then the I'm second thing, I think it's like horse poop, maybe. Sh- sh- if it makes you feel, lots of, like, how much do poop. elephants poop? Because like maybe there's some shredded oh, here. Oh, a lot. I just they watched sh- a video throw it in, throw it on making alleys. paper from elephant poop. There you go. Elephants poop a lot. They can make tons of paper out of this poop in uh, the alley. Mm-hmm. Okay, the second thing going for the golem <laughs> is it's probably still a little bit cautious about the medallion. Mm-hmm. It also doesn't want to die, so like it's probably a little cautious. Yeah. So it's got you got two to three things being. Tavirinus keeping Matt alive right now. Okay. So Matt can hear sounds from the street really close by, and he thinks if I can get there, maybe this golem won't want to fight in front of people. Yeah. But he can't get there. Can't get there. Nope, not happening. And then suddenly, Matt hears a man shout, He's down this alley. Follow me. Hurry. He'll get away. And then Matt keeps his eyes on the golem, and the golem looks towards the street, and then it says... I'm ordered to avoid notice so you'll live a little longer. And then it spins and runs down the alley. Yeah. So Matt's plan to get to the street was good in theory. Mm -hmm. But luckily, it doesn't want to be caught. Oh, yes. Luckily, it doesn't want to be caught. That's right. But Matt chases after it. And he isn't (laughs) sure why, except for that it's clearly going to keep trying to kill him. Yeah. Because it does have something to say before this. It says something like, or Matt remembers that it said something in yeah yeah the Riyadh about wanting him dead. He wants you dead as much as he wants her, and he doesn't know the, who the her is or, or the, the he. he. Okay, yeah. yes, okay. It was something along the lines of like Samuel and or Elaine slash Nynaeve, whatever. Right. Okay. So yeah. So Matt chases it, and the golem reaches a wall, glances back, and it sees Matt. So it sticks his hands into a brick 
size hole, like where a brick is missing yeah. in the wall. Puts it in the holes. <laughs> and Matt's like, ah, it's reaching for a weapon. It's like, what? what? A gun. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to pull a, a gun out. A sword or something. I don't know. <laughs> it's like, why would the... Throwing knives. But what then, does the golem need weapons? I know. But then the golem squeezes itself through the hole, and Matt's like, Holy, oh, man. Oh, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, well, <laughs> and then it, it like slithers, slithers It's through. like a snake. Yeah. But we saw, we know it went through that little rat hole when it attacked them in the Rahad. Mm-hmm. Like, we know, but Matt didn't technically see that happen. Mm-hmm. But we've also seen the golem, like, squeeze under the door and all that stuff to kill uh, yeah. people. We've so also seen... And, Merdral travel through shadows. Yeah. So are like yeah. Yes. We've yeah. seen everything. Yes, we at have. At this point. So now, yep. all of a sudden, all of a sudden, someone is right beside Matt and says, "I don't think I've ever seen the like." Yeah, crazy. And Matt realizes there's a stooping white-haired old man with a large hooked nose and a sad face and a bundle on his back standing right next to him. Yeah, and he tucks his big long dagger back into his coat. Yeah. And Matt says, I have in Shatter Logoth. Yeah. What the? So, what? Like Mordeth? Mordeth. That's what Mordeth did. So after the boys went down to the spooky dungeon. Yeah. And then they commented on like an Aes Sedai or whatever. And then Mordeth like freaked out. Did the yeah. whole Shadow Man routine. And like yeah. went flying terrifying. through a hole in the wall or uh-huh. whatever. So Matt's like, I've seen something like that before in Shadow Logoth. Okay. So who's this dude who knows? And then the guy's like, <laughs> not many survive a visit there. What took you to Shatter Logoth? But like, hey, stranger man, how do you know what Shatter Logoth, Logoth is? is? And why do you know it's well, dangerous? Everybody like knows that. Nobody knows. What? It's like a lost city on the map that very few people know about. Uh, I think that more people know about it than not. Well, this guy certainly does. Well, this guy's spooky, so it doesn't matter anyway. He's spooky? Oh, yeah. I'm very Wait, concerned. Wait, how spooky are you talking I'm here? I'm very concerned about this. Are you? Are you joking? I just want to know how concerned, because, like, why are... Oh, I am the most concerned. He just, like, saved Matt. Yes. I know. Okay. (laughs) I wasn't expecting that reaction. What? Spooky wasn't a word I thought, like... Of course. Interested, like, I don't know. No. Oh, it's totally a bad guy. My note at the very end of this chapter... Okay. I said, oh, definitely trust the random stranger who shows up just in time to save you from the shadow spawn. But, but Danny... He's not totally random. <laughs> I'm going to quiz you. Okay. 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 <laughs> okay. Because, okay, so here's the issue yeah. that I have with all of this. Okay. So Matt thinks this guy looks familiar, but can't place him. And anytime we have somebody just like randomly showing up and looks vaguely familiar. Yeah. We're just going to go ahead and trust them. Well, he is familiar. It's so stupid. He is familiar. Can you tell me from where? Not yet. Nope. I'm uh, going to wait. Okay. Let's keep going. Should I remember? Uh, There's no should way you? I should. Actually. Maybe. I don't know. It's so funny to me. Okay. Let's let's do this. So okay. Matt doesn't answer the Shadow Logoth question. No. But he's like, hey, where are the friends? You were shouting like, hey, he's this way. Where yeah. are those people? And he's like, yeah, I just thought <laughs> it might scare that guy off. But then after seeing him like shimmy through the brick, through. maybe extra people won't help. But yeah. like, okay, it worked. And then Matt's like, well, I'm Matt Cawthon from the two <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. He introduces himself and asks if this guy is a newcomer to Abudar. Oh, lovely small talk. Let's be best friends. Come yeah, well, the guy's been here for a while. Come to the palace with me. Yeah. Come on. Gonna have a hard time Where's finding it in. Where's your, like, sense of... Oh, I've been sleeping. I, you know, I've slept in bad places before. But he also notices that, because they shake hands, that his knuckles and, Are or like, his, as if his, hand his whole hand, broken. like, every bone in his hand is broken. It's weird. Yeah, has but then been. healed bad, yeah. but he's got a strong grip. It's good. It's okay. You're, you're not, you're concerned? Oh, my vibes are way off with this guy. Okay. I hate it. Okay. I hate this so let's, much. Uh, let's... I hate random encounters with strangers. It's not random, and, then, and he's not a stranger when you then... know his name. You know his name. Okay. Well, we know the name the guy introduces himself with, mm-hmm. and we're just going to trust that okay. everything is fine here. Okay. Matt's sense of danger is off here. A hundred percent. Okay. The man introduces himself as Noel Charn. Charin. Noel. Yeah, Noel Charin. Noel Charnin. Charin. Charin. It's not that hard of a name. Is this Noel someone Charin. they met on the Camelon Road? I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you what you know. That's what my I'm gonna okay. tell you what you know. It's okay. Okay, he's been here for some time now. <laughs> he's been sleeping in an attic, but then he got kicked out by somebody else, and he's gonna find an alley to sleep in. And it won't be the first time he slept rough even in a city. Yeah. Yeah. And then Matt's like Come to the palace with me, friend. Sure, you saved his life. Why wouldn't you? I am like 
really He's not like share feeling, a room with me. I'm feeling terrible about Just all get of an this. invite into the I'm house. I'm feeling awful. This is anyone who's showing up. This Does reminds it help? me. You know what this feels like for me when Taim shows up just in time oh. with the gray man situation. No, this feels sketchy and weird. Okay. It feels sketchy and weird. It's okay. weird. You're here just in But the dice time. don't stop, so it couldn't be the golem that the dice Well, di- no. Okay. You're not for the dice, but it's... Well, that's what Matt thinks. I know. Okay. Okay. Do you want to you want to get this complicated? Can you just tell me who this is? Let's go ahead and make things complicated. Go ahead. Go. So remember back in Crown of Swords? No. The White Plumes chapter? <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. So that was when they first I basically arrived. I remember because I wore a funny hat. That's right. And I thought it was feather. Or no, it is feathers. <laughs> Plumes are I feathers. And I thought it was like a big bow or something. There okay. we go. So Matt went to bet on horses at the Silver Circuit racetrack. Yeah. Went ho- at the horse racing track. Yeah. And at one point, he looks out at the crowd of people, and he notices a few people. And one of the people he notices is literally Millie Skane. Yes. And then one person he notices close to Millie Skane is a bent, white-haired old man with a hooked nose. Okay. Same description. Yeah. As this man. Yes. Okay, so that's the first thing. Mm-hmm. Then Matt starts following Millie Skane through the city, which is also where he picks up his fancy signet ring. That's right. Okay. And then, which he was spitting on his finger at some point in these chapters. Yes, by he the was. Way. Yes, okay. he was. Yeah. And then finally he tracks Millie Skane when she goes into the Ches- Chelsea Palace. Yes. That's where Jake and Carradine is staying. Yeah. Oh, and this guy was hovering around outside and I was super skeptical. So here, we, here we go. Here we I go. I was like, what's here this skeptical go. guy doing outside this palace? Okay, yeah. I and remember. we get, we I remember. get the Samuel, Jake okay. and Carradine, yep. Nelly Skane meeting. And then this guy just shows don't, up. Don't get too excited. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. And then Matt is outside and he says out loud, I wonder who lives there. And then you're right. Some old white haired old man with the hook nose lounging outside and he says, Carradine. Matt says, what? And he says, you asked who lives here. It's Jake and Carradine. And then Matt thinks about that for a second. And then he's like, oh, does a double take because he recognizes the guy from the horse track. Yeah. And he's like, oh, that's that guy at the horse track who is close to Millie Skane. Uh-huh. But when he turns back, the man is gone. And then the dice start tumbling in his head. Ah. Uh, but okay. we're not we're not done yet. Okay. Okay. Now to make it more complicated. After the racetrack scene, we got the Samuel Millie Skane Carradine chapter. Where we also afterwards go to the Thalion and Ispan chapter in Crown of Swords when they murder one of the red belted kinswomen. Right. So they murder her and then tell two guys, hey, slit her throat and dump her in an alleyway. And then there's a guy watching them there's bring. A guy, there's a guy. We get his perspective. We get his perspective. Yeah. So this is his perspective. There's a guy watching them bring them out. Yes. I remember that. So he's sitting on a barrel in the alley and he's watching the house across the street and he realizes he's touching his head again. And he doesn't have a headache, but he, his head feels peculiar sometimes, usually when he thinks about things he can't remember. So he's found out who's living in the house, and he knows that they're Aes Sedai, the Espan Falian thing, so he found out that yeah. information because he's watching them. Then then a young man comes down the street and thinks about robbing this guy, like the old guy, and then decides against it. And then the mystery guy, this old white-haired guy, thinks about his two long knives he's carried for well over 30 years. Then he sees the two guys pushing like the barrow piled with straw and muck. And he's like, oh, why are they pushing that? They don't muck out the stables. It's clearly the dead body of the kinswoman. Yeah. But then he decides he'll stay here till dark to see if he can find Carradine's pretty little killer again, Millie's game. And then he or pulls... Or the Lady Cheyenne. Or the Lady as Cheyenne, we know as we know yeah, now. Okay. Yeah, and then he pulls his hand down from his head again, and he thinks sooner or later he would remember he doesn't have much time left, but it was all he did have. So that's why this guy looks familiar to Matt, is because he's familiar to Matt. Mm. We've gotten scenes with him, but it gets even more complicated. Okay, go. Because we know the last name, Charin. Okay. We do. That I've been quizzing you since the eye of the world on your Wheel of Time history. On my history. History lesson. So you know Lan, that warder guy, married to Nynaeve, (laughs) that guy? Oh, yeah. Mandrake. Oh, Alan Mandragoran. There we go. Lord of the Seven Towers, Lord of Lakes, Crownless King of Malkyrie. Oh, yeah. What about him? So way back when, Shionar was a part of the Borderlands, but it was less than 50 years ago. And Shionar was not truly the Borderlands because Malkyrie was further north. Okay. And Malkyrie was the one who held back the Blight. Yeah. Now, Lan's father, Alakir Mandragoran, was the last crown king of the Malkyrie. And as the story goes, the king's brother, Lane, on a dare, led lances through the Blight to the Blasted Lands, maybe even to Shale Ghoul itself. And Lane's wife, Brayan, 
made the dare because she envied that Alakir was raised king instead of her husband, Lane. Now, Alakir and Lane were close as brothers, but Brian, the wife, was jealous. And then Lane died in the Blasted Lands, and Brian, the jealous wife, blamed Lan's dad, the king, for not sending more troops to help him. And then to get revenge, Brian plotted with Cowan Gamalin, who's Cowan Fairheart, to seize the throne for her son, Isam. Right. Okay. Now, then there was a vote, and the great lords cast their rods for king, and Cowan almost beat Alakir, but then didn't. And it turned out that Cowan Fairheart was a dark friend. So, with no soldiers on the front lines, Trollocs poured into Malkier. And then Lane's death also didn't help, because the people were then shaken. Now, Brian fled with her infant son, Isam, and they were run down by Trollocs, and no one knows what happened to Isam. Well, yeah, okay. And then, the most important part, is Cowan's treachery was exposed, and he was taken by a young man named Jane Charon. Okay. Also na- known as Jane Farstrider. Okay. Yeah, the, the the tales of... Tales of Jane Farstrider. Mm-hmm. His last name is Charon, or Charon. Okay. And this guy has named himself as Noel Charon. Charon. So. Okay, that's nice. I still don't trust him. Well, as the story goes, then (laughs) Malkier fell, but we know the last name. And now we have this old man (laughs) who's suspicious. Old man. And something's going on. (laughs) Suspicious, that is certainly a word for this. So at least we have a family name. So maybe there is some relation. To Jane Farstrider? Jane Farstrider was a... The traveler guy. Malkier isn't that long gone. Like, Lan is about... Is the baby. Is like, the 40 baby or something, 50 right? years ago. 50? So, like, Lan's probably around that age. Yeah. So, like, hypothetically, a young Jane Farstrider would be, like, you know, 20, 15, 20 or something. So, a Jane Farstrider could be pretty old but still alive. But a Noel may be a relation. Okay. Something to think about. I feel like... I don't have anything to say. <laughs> <laughs> Let it soak in. Let it soak oh. in. I was following you. I was with you when you were talking about this actual physical person. Yeah, yeah. And then you lost me I a had little. to give you the backstory on the family name. You lost me we, a little. We know the family name. Yeah. That's what we know. Okay. All right. We got connections. We got to okay. look for them. Okay. And we got a spooky old man now. We certainly do. Have a spooky old man. Does it help or that hurt? has lost his memory? Yeah, you know the fact that we have some backstory is better. Okay, it's better because then I can sort of start puzzling some stuff out. Or it's maybe not, he's think not a completely it. unknown dude. Yeah, because I was like, ooh, complete stranger. Yeah, weirdo. Except at no point was I like complete stranger because whenever you get the sentence. And then he looked familiar. Yeah. (laughs) But no time for that now. Well, it seems like they both have memory problems. So, like, maybe they could bond over that. Yeah. (laughs) Anyway, Matt's going to invite him to the palace, but he realizes the dice are still spinning in his head. Yeah. So. That's how we're going to leave that one. Pretty much. So if they are warning about the golem, it clearly wasn't that. It's going to be something worse, and he doesn't want to find out what it is, except at some point, there's no doubt that he will. Mm-hmm. Now, this is where I was like, let's not trust the creepy stranger who just showed up in the nick of time. Right? Okay. Yeah. Is the unexpected encounter with the golem or with yeah, the strange man? the golem. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But the strange man doesn't help. And it has me on edge. Okay. Well, think about what I said. Think about the things that we've seen him do. Yeah. I want to go back and listen to what I said about him when we You're were, gonna met have him. To. You got to go do your homework and do some research here. I might have to because I for sure didn't trust him then. Well, I mean, if he's staying in the palace now, like he might be around for a little bit. So like, let's let's figure this out. I don't know. like uh, Before like, he does Matt's something like, dastardly. Ah, good. A friend. It is a friend. No. What? No. <laughs> This is We're not what, making friends. You could have with way more friends. Hobos. You could have you way can't. more friends if you trusted more people That's that the showed problem. up randomly in yeah. alleyways with you. That is my problem. Yeah. I don't just trust you every person. Want to make friends? Person. Go to your nearest local alleyway and go make friends. I just That's bad <laughs> advice. Put that on the list. Don't do it. Okay. <laughs> Don't do that. You want to find I your friends like a, it. like a pumpkin patch or something, but you got to go to a pumpkin patch. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Don't definitely meet your friends in an alley. Definitely make friends in a pumpkin patch. Yeah. Not in an alleyway. Yeah. 
Uh-huh. Uh-huh. That's what I have to say about that. <laughs> We're going to get somebody commenting, I met my best friend in an alleyway. <laughs> it's, There's a, and it's turns like, out that's not your best out. friend. It's a murderer. <laughs> Just playing the long game. Long game. <laughs> okay, I am excited to read on. Okay. Things are happening, and I just want to know where we're going to go in the story. We're in the second half of the book, and we know that Robert Jordan turns it up in the second half of the He does, but then he also slows it down. Sometimes. Yeah. But then ramps it up ah, again. Ah, we never know. It's a roller coaster. Okay, so before you go ahead and trust a random stranger who is just showing up to save your life, I'm going to say that this is part of the pattern now. Yeah, it's part of the pattern. All right, that'll do it for us tonight. But thanks so much for listening, everyone. The Wheel Weaves is hosted by Danny and Brett, edited by Danny, produced by Danny and Brett with Passion Socks, Cody Feltz, Mozyme, Moltude, Benjamin, Michelle O'Brien, Jonathan Reese, Jamie Young, Megan Smiley, Margaret, Charlie Has, Hannah Green, Lance Barden, Elspeth Ahola, and Adam, with music by Audio Nautics. Be sure to check out our Patreon page if you're interested in supporting us and the podcast. We'd love to send you some Patreon-exclusive merchandise as a thank you, plus you'll gain access to our episodes earlier than everyone else. And at the time of this recording, we have over 40 bonus episodes for your listening pleasure. You can find all that and more at patreon.com slash thewheelweavespodcast. For general information about our show and information like how to send us shot glasses, how to join our Discord, and how to get in touch with us, visit thewheelweavespodcast.com. Plus, find us on social media on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at The Wheel Weaves Podcast. And as always, be sure to give us a five-star review because it really does make a huge difference in helping other people find us. And be sure to tell a friend, Riyadh, because referrals really are the best compliment. Thanks again for listening. This really is part of the pattern now.